Welcome back guys this is the king of weebs here and this is what if Naruto carried the legacy of the Uzumaki. Part 1. Link to the fanfiction in the description below and also join the discord server linked below. Don't forget to like and subscribe with notifications on. Anyway let's get right to it and enjoy. I don't own Naruto or anything. Pain, leader of AIM, and the figurehead leader of Akatasuki was meditating when a figure walked into the room wearing a spiral mask and said, Zetsu has returned from his fact-finding mission. Assemble the others so he may update everyone on the Jinchuriki. Pain nods and Conan walked over to him and said, Are you ready Nagato? Pain closed his eyes and said, Conan. If you had a choice to make between me and Akatasuki, which would you chose? Conan looked at Pain and said, I am with you, always Nagato. Pain nods and said, Good, let's go. As they both used the projection jutsu to appear in a cave with the other members of Akatasuki. As the last members appeared Deidre said, Why are we here again? Pain said, Zetsu is here to update everyone on Theer targets. Zetsu proceed. Zetsu said, the Ichibi is still as the last time I reported. The Nibi and Hachibi are both in Kumo training together but Theer exact location is unknown. Sanbi Jinchiriki has died and the Sanbi has Isaped into the sea and its current location is unknown. The Yanbi and Gobi are both in Iwa living living as hermits while reporting to the Suchikage every six months. Where they stay usually is still unknown. The Rokubi is still in the land of water. The Nanabi status is unknown. I have already informed you of the Hachibi so that leaves the Kayubi. Pain eyes narrowed slightly as Zetsu said, the Kayubi has failed graduating early a second time. Pain said, there are still too many unknowns to begin moving right now. Zetsu, continue tracking the Jinchuriki starting with those in Iwa, the rest of you continue your fun gathering missions. Dismissed. After the Jutsu ended Conan and Pain were back in Theer hideout in AIM and Nagato said, Conan, please put up a privacy Jutsu. Conan blinked and looked at Nagato a moment before putting one up and said, what's wrong? Pain looked at her and said, Conan. Remember earlier when I asked you if you had a choice between me and Akatasuki. Dot the reason is. I have to betray Akatasuki. Conan's eyes widened and said in an unsure voice, what do you mean? Pain said, my mother. My mother was Umi Uzumaki of the Uzumaki clan of Whirlpool Village before it was destroyed by Iwa Nins. Umi Uzumaki was the elder sister of Kashina Uzumaki. Mother of Naruto Uzumaki, Jinchuriki of the Kayubi no Kitsune. Conan gasped and said, he's your cousin. In a soft voice. Pain said, yes. I had sent Preta Path back to where my home was and began to look around and discovered a chest my mother had hid under one of the boards in the bedroom. If Preta Path had not stepped through the board on accident then I would not have discovered it. I found letters between mother and Kashina. Kashina was Kayubi second Jinchuriki. After I learned the truth about Kayubi and the history of its Jinchuriki I learned the truth. Madara doesn't care about us. He only wants revenge against Konoha. And the Uzumaki clan. As far as I know Naruto is the only family I have left. I can't let him die. Konan said, what is it you plan to do Nagato? Pain said, I plan to stall Akatasuki movement to get him while also secretly helping him to get strong enough to defeat the others. I need you to deliver this to Konoha to Naruto himself. As he pulled out a scroll from his cloak. Conan said, what is it? Pain said, everything he will need to become strong enough to face what is to come to survive. Conan nods and said, I'll leave immediately. Pain said, Conan, thank you. Conan who had started toward the door said, I would do anything for you Nagato. I'll return quickly. As she burst into a shower of paper and disappeared. One week later Naruto Uzumaki sighed as he walked into his apartment and reached for the light switch after closing the door when a hand covered his mouth and he felt a kanai at his neck and a female voice said, Are you Naruto Uzumaki, shake your head yes or no? Naruto who was scared shook his head yes and the female said, Sorry for attacking you. I had to make sure that you were who I was searching for. I have something for you that I was asked to deliver to you. There is a scroll on your table I have left for you. When you wake up read it. Before he felt a pressure in his neck and fell to the ground as a piece of paper folded like a senbon needle floated out of his neck. The next morning when Naruto awoke he found himself in his bed and he blinked and thought what the hell, what happened? As he looked around and thought, I guess it was a dream. As he got out of bed and left his bedroom to head to the bathroom when he froze as he saw his table had been cleaned off and there was a scroll by itself on his table and Naruto thought, maybe it wasn't a dream. Naruto walked over and picked up the scroll and opened and began to read Hello Naruto Uzumaki, 
I would like to tell you who I am but I can't give you my name because you are in extreme danger and finding out my name will put you in even more danger. I can tell you this though, I am your cousin. My mother was the elder sister to your mother Kashina Uzumaki. Naruto eyes widened and thought, my mother's name was Kashina Uzumaki and I have a cousin. Now I never actually met your mother and only actually know her about her from letters she wrote to my mother when they were younger. I would have asked my mother about her. Dot, but my mother and father were murdered by Konoha Ninja right in front of me during the Second Great War. Naruto eyes widen again and he frowned and thought why did they murder them? You're probably wondering why they killed them, it is because the strong prey on the weak. The world is consumed by the desire for revenge, greed, and power. People cannot understand each other until they understand pain. Only through pain can the world truly come to understand peace. Now you are most likely confused by this because you do not understand true pain yet. That is until I tell you everything including what the people of Konoha have hidden from you. Naruto thought, what did he mean by that? I will tell you what I believe is true from what I have been able to discover from my mother's letters as well as hiring some others to find out info for me. Mido Uzumaki Senju, wife of the Shodem Hokage was originally sent to Konoha as part of a political marriage between the land of Whirlpool, the original homeland of the Uzumaki clan in Konoha. The Uzumaki clan was known as the best seal masters in the world as well as having a bloodline that was called Special Chakra. Our bloodline makes it where our chakra is stronger than other people's chakra. You have failed the Genin exam twice from what I have discovered because you couldn't do the Bunshin no Jutu. The reason you couldn't was because your chakra is too strong for it right now because of your bloodline. The Sandame Hokage knows this but has hidden this from you along with other things. She was sent to Konoha but was then betrayed by Konoha who had forced her to use her clan sealing knowledge to seal the Kayubi in herself making her a Jinchuriki or a human sacrifice. Naruto eyes widen as he read this now I can't be sure about her being forced to part. But I do know that she did have the Kayubi sealed into her. I also know that your mother, Kashina Uzumaki was brought to Konoha and made the second Jinchuriki of the Kayubi when she was a little girl because she was a prodigy in our clan. My mother's diary she had with the letters I read said she wonder what happened to her little sister after she disappeared. My mother did not know what happened to your mother so I believe that it was not the clan's choice to send your mother to Konoha. I think she was kidnapped and forced to go to Konoha. Naruto thought, no, it can't be. I know you probably are thinking this can't be true and I could be wrong, I admit that, but I want to be honest with you so you can understand where I am coming from. I told you how Mito Uzumaki was sent as part of a political marriage to show they were allies. But it was not even two years after your mother disappeared from Whirlpool that Whirlpool was attacked by Iwa and Konoha never came to help them. That the people of Whirlpool and the Uzumaki clan were spread out into the world not knowing who lived and who died. If they were our ally as they were supposed to be. Dot why didn't they help our people? Dot why is it your mom was the only survivor of Whirlpool in Konoha? Naruto who was confused thought, why is that? Now I am going to tell you about why I don't trust Konoha. Several years ago, after my parents were killed, my two best friends and I tried to bring peace to our country and we had agreed to meet with the leader of our country as well as a group of Konoha ninja who claimed they would help us to bring peace to our country. It was a trap. A Konoha ninja by the name of Danzo runs a secret army called Root. They dress like Anbu but have the kanji for Ne on white mask. They kidnapped one of my friends and used her as a hostage. Dot the same one who brought you this scroll. My best friend was killed that day because of the Root and the man who was the leader of my country. After that day I found out that Danzo found out I was an Uzumaki and because of the number of his root ninja I had to kill in order to save my other friend's life he had his root ninja begin hunting down and killing every Uzumaki he could. That is why I believe that you and me are the last two Uzumaki in the world and I only recently learned about you. Naruto fist were clenched in anger and thought those bastards. Now I think I should explain to you how I found out about you and your mother. You're not going to like it though and you may hate me and if you do I'm sorry. Naruto thought, I can't hate you. After that day I had to kill those root ninja and the ninja the leader of my country brought with him. I created an army and killed the leader of my country. I was then made the new leader of my country. AIM country. Naruto thought, he's the leader of AIM. Cool. AIM country was in bad shape. Because AIM is a small country the larger nations like the Fire Nation and Konoha would use the smaller nations as their battlefields to wage war on each other and then once Thier war was over they would go back to Thier normal lives and leave us with the death, pain, and destruction. That is why when a man appeared and offered me a chance to help protect my country and its people from becoming casualties of the larger nation's battles when they got angry at each other again and went to war one was willing to do it to save my people's lives. Dot the man told me about Jinchuriki and the demons they had sealed inside them. Naruto thought like mom and that Mido lady. He claimed that if we gathered all the biju we could use them as a weapon to scare the other nations into leaving us alone when they fought Thier wars. And I agreed. Dot but that was before I found out about you. 
Dot you see, in order for the plan to work I had to help create a group called Akatasuki. It is a group consisting of S rank missing ninja. Dot the other members of Akatasuki believe that I am the leader of Akatasuki. But I am not, the man who came to me and told me about the biju is and he is stronger than me. Akatasuki job is to capture the Jinchuriki of all nine biju and then we would seal the biju away into a special statue the man I told you about has that can hold them. But in order to seal away the biju, the Jinchuriki will have the biju extracted from their bodies and they will die. Naruto eyes wide and I didn't know about Mito or your mom then or about you. And I can't stop Akatasuki, the real leader will kill me and the woman who brought you this scroll. If I known about you and your mother's connection to the Kayubi I never would have agreed and now it's too late. All I can do is stall them. You're probably wondering why my note sounds so frantic. Dot the reason is because I don't want you to get hurt or die. Dot the only reason I found out about you or your mother is because you are the third Jinchuriki of the Kayubi. The scroll fell from Naruto hands as his mind went into shock. After half an hour he slowly picked up the scroll and continued reading Naruto, there is so much I don't know. My anger over my parents' death at the hands of Konoha Ninja as well as my friend's death at the hands of Root has caused me to make the biggest mistake of my life. The only thing I can do is give you time, help you get stronger and try to protect you. I am hoping that you can find it in your heart to forgive me. At the bottom of this scroll is a seal. You just have to put some chakra in the seal and a scroll will pop out of it. It contains a jutsu for you to learn. Once you learn the jutsu then there is another seal at the bottom of that scroll with another scroll in it. This process will repeat over and over. There are over 200 scrolls total and I want you to learn them as quickly as possible in the order I gave them to you because they will make you very strong quickly. I don't want you to just learn them, I want you to master them all. You must hurry and get strong as fast as possible. Once you unseal the scroll from the bottom of this scroll this scroll will destroy itself. If you see someone wearing a black cloak with red clouds on it, run. Run as fast and as hard as you can to get away. That is what Akatasuki wear. Forgive me my cousin. Live a long life and restore our clan. Find happiness and hopefully peace. Don't tell anyone what you know about Akatasuki, Root, your status as a Jinchuriki, your family, or me. If anyone ask where you got the scroll or the item sealed in it say a postal nin gave it to you. When Akatasuki spies find out that you have graduated from the Ninja Academy. I will place you in the bingo book to show you that I am proud of you and I will also put down who your mother was, our clan, our bloodline. And if I found out between now who he is or was I will also put down your father and I will make sure that you get a copy of it. Goodbye. Naruto let a tear fall and thought, I forgive you Itoko, cousin. Naruto then unsealed the scroll from the bottom of the scroll and a few moments later the first scroll burst into flames for a moment before it was destroyed. Naruto smiled softly and thought, I'll make you proud. Dot all of you, as he opened the scroll and read. Cage Bunshin no Jutsu. The Cage Bunshin no Jutsu is a Junin level Kenjutsu that was originally created by the Uzumaki clan to deal with Thier bloodline. It divides the chakra of the user evenly between it and the original when the Jutsu is used. It is a Kenjutsu because of the large chakra requirement that comes with making it. The chakra requirement could kill the user if they are not careful or overuse it. This however is not true to the extent of others for the Uzumaki clan. The Uzumaki clan bloodline makes it where Thier chakra is 10x more potent than anyone else's chakra. Because of this instead of dividing the chakra evenly between the user and the cage bunshin, an Uzumaki chakra is only divided a fraction of this. Also a special note about the cage bunshin no jutsu is that when it dispels all the knowledge the cage bunshin learned is transferred back to the original which explains why the Uzumaki clan would use them to work on Thier chakra control and also seals so that they could learn to control Thier bloodline better as well as learn the correct and incorrect ways to do seals without blowing themselves up. It is noted when first learning to use the cage bunshin no jutsu and Uzumaki should get away from others in either the woods, or a training ground so that if they mess up others wouldn't be hurt as well as reduce the property damage. The seals for the cage bunshin are. Naruto smiled and thought, that's cool. Well I guess I can begin to train. Just then his stomach growled and Naruto thought, well. Maybe after getting some ramen. Seven hours later Naruto was in the woods panting and thought, one more time. As he put his hands together and said, cage bunshin no jutsu. And 12 cage bunshin appeared and Naruto laughed and said, I got it. Before passing out. The next day when Naruto awoke he found himself still in the clearing he was at the day before and he blinked a moment before the memories of the previous day hit him and quickly got to his feet and put his hands together and said, Cage Bunshin no Jutsu. 20 Cage Bunshin appeared and Naruto said, yes, I did it. He then reached into his weapon pouch and pulled out the scroll and unsealed the next scroll and read. Congratulations on completing your first step in the right direction. Now as stated before the Cage Bunshin no Jutsu is a Jutsu that allows you learn quicker but it does not make you physically stronger. 
That is why you should work on training your body while your cage bun shin work on training your mind and chakra. However, there is a secret training method to the cage bunshin that is speed training greatly. Since a cage bunshin knows everything you know when it is created and also gets the memories of the other cage bunshin when they dispel. Now the secret training is every 5 minutes one cage bunshin dispels itself to give the original and the other cage bunshin its knowledge so they don't make the same mistakes he did and can learn to do something quicker. At the bottom of this scroll are 4 seals with the kanji 1, 2, 3, and 4 above them. Number 1 is a training schedule for physical training to help you improve your body. Number 2 is 5 books to help you improve your mind. Number 3 is a chakra control exercise called tree walking and number 4 is the next scroll in the series but should not be opened until you have completed everything in the first 3 seals because the next series are built on knowledge gained from the current task. Naruto said, well I guess we better see what we got. As he unsealed the 3 scrolls and opened the physical training and read. At the bottom of this scroll are sealed a set of 5 pounds arm and leg weights. You must wear them at all time unless you are taking a bath or sleeping. There is also a stone that is solid black with seals on it. The seal is a summoning seal and what you must do is bit your finger and put your blood on the seal and send chakra into the seal. Send chakra into it until the seal glows blue. Once it does then take off running as fast as you can. The seal is preset to summon you after 4 minutes. If you are able to run 5 miles away in 5 minutes then your speed will be at the right level to de proceed and the seal will not summon you. You will have to put your blood on the seal and send chakra into it each time you are summoned until it glows blue then take off running again. There are also a pair of gloves that have seals on them to teach proper hand signs. You are to make the 12 hand signs in the following order, rat, ox, tiger, rabbit, dragon, snake, horse, ram, monkey, bird, inu, and boar. If you mess up then your hands will get a small shock and will be numb until you are summoned back to the stone. If you can make all 12 hand signs correctly then the finger on one of the gloves will change from black to white. Each time you make all 12 in a row correctly another finger will turn white. If you mess up then all the fingers will be reset back to black. If you are summoned back to the stone then all the fingers will turn back black. If you can do all 12 hand signs 10 times in a row and not get summoned then your hand seal speed is good enough to pass. There is a metal rod with a small hook on one side and big hook on the other and a small punching bag and a huge pooching bag in a seal at the bottom of this scroll. What you will do is hang the small bag up on the small hook and send chakra into the seal on it until it glows blue. Once you do then you start pooching right then left then right then left. Keep punching switching hands. If you can punch the bag small bag 200 times total in 5 minutes then the bag will get heavier and go from weighing 5 lb to 10 pounds. If you don't make it then the bag will remain red. If you do then it will change color. There are 5 colors, red, blue, green, black, and white. The bag turns white then your punching speed is passed for this level. After 5 minutes you will have to send chakra into the seal again and start punching again in an attempt to get your punching speed up to level. The big punching bag goes on the big hook and is basically the same as the small bag but it starts out at 10 pounds and goes up to 20 pounds with the same 5 colors. What you should do is try to do the running first then punching and then kicking and then take a 10 minute rest before starting over again. This way your physical training is balanced. Naruto thought, cool, as he unsealed the next scroll and read the titles. Now I know your thinking books are boring but there is no such thing as useless knowledge. You never know when you could save the life of a friend or family by knowing the human body, you never know when knowing the different ways to use chakra could come in handy, you never know if you're facing an enemy who uses water jutsu what element you can use to stop them and you never know when the seal at the bottom of a scroll could be a trap and instead of a storage seal it is an exploding tag. You would never know if the plant you found in the forest could be aid or if it was a poison or medicine. With the knowledge from the books below you would know. Dot but remember the secret training that was mentioned above. Now this works on books as well. Here is how you do it. Have a cage bun shin read the first page. Then have it create a cage bun shin and have the second cage bun shin read back the page from memory. If it misses one word then the original cage bunshin must start over and read the page again before creating a second cage bunshin again who will read what it remembers. If it remembers every word on that page then fold the corner of that page slightly to show it is done and move to the next page and repeat the process until it runs out of chakra for the day. The next day have a cage bunshin start from page 1 and have it create a second cage bunshin who will read back what it remember from the day before until it gets to a page it doesn't know or messes up on and start the process over again from that page. The human body for beginners. Chakra for beginners. Chakra elements for beginners. Seals for beginners. Plants and herbs for beginners. Naruto frowned and thought, alright, maybe books are useful and using that training method will help. Let's see what the last scroll is. 
Tree walking is one of the most common chakra control exercise in the world. It can be used on almost any solid surface. What you must do is send chakra to your feet and use it to stick to a tree. Too much and you blow off, not enough and you won't stick. You can never become too good for chakra control practice. The more chakra you have the longer you need to practice. The Uzumaki clan would have Cage Bunshin practice this exercise every day. To pass this level you must be able to run up and down a tree 100 times each without stopping or without touching the ground. When you do you are ready for the next level. Naruto thought, this won't take long. Three weeks later Naruto thought, okay, that took longer than I thought it would. But I do feel stronger than ever and my chakra feels easier to control and I feel like I have even more chakra. Naruto then opened the next scroll and read. Congratulations, you know or where a first year academy student should be. Naruto's smile slipped from his face and thought, no way, was I really that bad? Now for the next lesson. This is basically the next level of training built on the last level. You have five seals below with the next level of chakra control, physical conditioning, book knowledge, and the new field, reflex training and finally the next tear of training. Naruto thought, well let's see what we got. The physical training is like the last level except instead of 5 minutes you have 4 minutes to do each, 10 pounds weights for your arms and leg, as well as 10 pounds of body weight to go under your cloths. Naruto thought, well that won't be too hard. Let's check out chakra control. By now you have noticed your chakra control is better. Dot but better is not the best. Chakra control is just as important as physical strength. Chakra control will be divided into four even teams of cage bunshins. Team 1 will continue to do the tree walking exercise you learned in the last tear. Team 2 will begin tree walking. Dot but with thier hands and knees to crawl up the tree instead of thier feet. Team 3 will begin the leaf floating exercise where they put a leaf on thier forehead and get it to float an inch above thier head, to much chakra and it will blow off, not enough it will either fall off or not move. Once you can do it on your head you will then begin to work on both hands. Team 4 will begin the water walking exercise. Water walking is like the other chakra control exercise, too much chakra and it will blow off, not enough and you will sink. However because water is not a solid but a liquid, it can move so start first on water that is not moving like a pond, then a stream, then a river. Naruto was wide eyed and thought, oh yeah, that is going to be so cool. Let's check out those books. I hope you learned the importance of knowledge on the last tear. There is no such thing as bad knowledge. The human body for novice. Chakra for novice. Chakra elements for novice. Seals for novice. Plants and herbs for novice. Strategy for beginners. How to play chess for beginners. How to play reversi for beginners. How to play shogi for beginners. How to play go for beginners. Naruto blinked and thought, wonder why he wants me to learn to play those games. Well let's see what reflexes are. Reflex training is an important part of a ninja life. Reflexes will save you almost as much as physical strength and chakra. Reflex training is also one of the simplest thing in the world to figure out but it is also one of the hardest to train to do. It's simple, you learn to dodge and block, sounds simple right? Wrong. Included below is 100 rubber balls with the color changing seal on them. What you will do is create 25 cage bunshin who will get 4 balls each. They will then circle you and channel chakra into the balls and throw it at you where you will have dodge as many as you can as well as trying to catch them. Each time you catch one then you put them in the bag provided. Below that you will tie to your waist. If the ball hits the ground then then the ball will stay its current color. If it hits you it will change color. If the ball reaches white that is consider one kill against you. After the cage bunshin run out of balls they will grab as many as they can that are free and reset around you again and start over until either all the balls kill you or you catch them all. What you have to do is dodge the balls and try to catch them in the air without being killed. When you can dodge long enough to catch all 100 balls without being killed once as well as able to water walk for an hour, leaf float on both hands and your head, and do all physical exercise in 4 minutes then you will be ready for the next tear. Naruto thought, oh great. My cousin a sadist. That night when Naruto limped into his apartment thought, I hate you kus. 5 weeks later Naruto was locking the door to his apartment to continue his training and thought, today is the day. All I have to do is dodge 3 more balls and I'll finish this level. Before he turned and started down the stairs and when he got to the ground level a Anbu appeared in front of him and said, Naruto Uzumaki, the Hokage would like to see you. Please report to the Hokage office immediately. Naruto frowned but nods and turned and began to walk toward the Hokage tower. Ten minutes later Naruto walked into the Sandame's office and said, Hey Gigi, what's up? The Sandame looked at Naruto and said, Well I haven't seen or heard from you in over two months and I was worried about you after you failed the graduation test last time. Naruto said, yeah, I've been training, trying to get stronger so I can pass next time. Hiruzen said, so you are planning to still continue at the academy. 
Naruto said, yeah, why wouldn't I be? With a confused look on his face Hiruzen said, well since the academy starts in a few weeks and I hadn't received your admittance form for this year. Naruto said, what form? I haven't seen any form. As he looked confused, Hiruzen frowned and said, I see. Well I happen to have the admittance form here on my desk so if you want to sign it then I'll fill out the rest for you. Naruto said, sure. As he walked over and picked up the form and began to read it and Hiruzen said, what are you doing? Naruto looked up and said, ha, huh, just reading what I'm about to sign. It's not smart to sign something unless you know for sure what it is after reading everything on it. Hiruzen said, that is true, it's why my job is so hard sometimes because I have to read carefully every document that comes across my desk. Naruto blinked and started to say something when he thought, wait, if I tell him about Cage Bunshin then he will want to know how I know that. I could use that excuse of a postal ninja but I don't want you yet. And said, why don't you get someone to help you? I mean with all the paperwork I've seen you do over the years as looks like too much for one person to handle. Hiruzen said, true, it is too much for someone to handle but sadly only the hoe. Cage could. As his eyes widened a moment before narrowing slightly and said, anyways as I was saying the academy starts next week on Monday. Naruto said, okay, I'll be there, is that all GG? Hiruzen said, yes, that is all, good luck Naruto. Naruto nods and left and Hiruzen thought, you really did give me a great idea Naruto. Once Naruto left the office he went and got some Ichiruka ramen and quickly went to the woods where he trains. An hour later Naruto yelled, yes, I did it. As he caught the last ball. Naruto then pulled out the scroll and unsealed the next one and read. Congratulations. You are now good enough to be a second year academy student in most hidden villages. As such you should start thinking about dressing more like an Uzumaki. The Uzumaki clan wore gray, black and blue clothing with more gray and black than blue and it was light blue, not bright blue. They also wore a vest to put scrolls, sealing items, or other items in. Now this is important, if you look at a leaf hiate you will notice a spiral inside the middle of it. That spiral is the Uzumaki clan symbol. It should be displayed on all your clothing but because Konoha is using it on most of Thier clothing I would have included a picture of a new symbol that better shows the Uzumaki clan symbol it is still the spiral but it has four big circles one on the top, one on the bottom, one on the left and one on the right still connected to the outside line of the spiral. For those who know ceiling they will recognize this as a ceiling symbol. Now of course you're wondering how could I afford new clothing. Sealed at the bottom of this scroll is $10,000 as well as a receipt showing the cash was payment for returning a wallet a man dropped in case anyone doubts you on the man. If anyone asked the man had gray hair, tan skin, was shorter and wore a suit, a scar on his left cheek, and no pinky finger on either hand. Now enough about clothing, on with lessons. Included in this scroll are several more books for you to read. For reflex training on the last tier you had to keep all the balls from going white. Now you need to learn to dodge them before they all turn black for this tier. I won't keep repeating this over the next couple of tier but every tier from now you need to go and reduce the color one time per tier until you can dodge every ball without being hit once. Your physical training is also going to be the same way, I've included adjustable weights with 5 pounds bars so you can add 5 pounds every time you can do the running exercise in under 4 minutes, 5 times without going over the 4 minutes time limit one of those times while also doing hand signs. Keep doing them but try to add an extra set every time you add 5 pounds of weight. When you have reached 50 pounds on your chest, arm and leg weights each you will run out of weights. I personally feel weight training is best to never go over double your normal weight total. I figured you weigh 125 pounds and once you reach 50 pounds on everything that will be a total of 250 pounds. Keep up the punching and kicking practice as well with the weight training. This will help you adjust to the weights better and increase your kicking and punching speed and power. Start sparing with your cage bun shin. Create them when you don't have your weights on and then put your weights on so that you will be slower than they are. Start off fighting 5 of them. Once you can beat 5 cage bun shin without actually being punched then move up to 10, then 15, then 20 and finally 25 cage bun shin. You need to be able to either dodge or block each of their attacks. Blocks and dodges don't count as hits but if they hit you and you didn't block or dodge then it counts against you. Grazing hits count as a hit also so make sure it was a clean hit or block. You also need to work on your weapon throwing and weapon use. Shuriken, kunais and senbons are good to start with. Use your cage bun shin as targets but don't try to randomly hit them to kill them. Target one area like target the legs and only the legs or the arms, or the head. Also do this while fighting them. They will be trying to punch and kick you while you use weapons against them. If they manage to hit you then you lose and have to start over. Start with 5 like your taijutsu and move up from there. This will help you learn to use your cage bun shin defensively as well as offensively. You need to learn to practice your other jutsu as well like those taught in the academy. 
Have 10 cage bunshin work on each of them all day. When you can kill 20 cage bunshin with taijutsu or weapons then the cage bunshin will be allowed to use the replacement and bunshin and cage bunshin against you. This will help you more than you know. Now all we need to discuss is your chakra control. Included below is the instructions for chakra strings. This will be the hardest exercise for you to date. This will also be your greatest advantage later because think about this. When you start weapon practice and your cage bunshin can start using jutsu while you're not allowed to that means that you will be missing and wasting weapons where you will eventually run out of weapons. In a real fight you can't have the enemy stop so you can grab more weapons. They will come in and kill you. But if you learn to use the chakra strings you could learn to move them as you throw them as well as learning to pick them up off the ground and attack the enemy from behind if you got good enough. The uses of this jutsu are as many as the uses of cage bunshin. For the next 10 tears you will have nothing but books to read so you can just create your cage bunshin at your apartment and have them work on that and then practice your chakra control exercises. Combine those exercises together, when a leaf becomes too easy move up to a small rock then a shuriken, then a kanai, then senbon, then I don't know, learn to control heavier and bigger things. Every ounce of chakra control you get will help you. You might also look into getting a close range weapon, something besides kanai, shurikens, and senbons. Learning a taijutsu style is also good but I have no idea what style would work best for you. Maybe ask the Hokage about learning one outside of the academy style. By the time you can do all of this and finish the 5 tiers then you will be strong enough to start learning chakra manipulation which will take up most of your time until you get out of the academy. Good luck. Naruto smiled and thought, thanks Kus. Before he unsealed the instruction on the chakra strings and thought, damn, this is going to take a while. As he unsealed the books and saw they were just more advanced books on the same subjects from the last tear before resealing them and Naruto thought well I'll let my clones practice the rest of the day on chakra control. I'll go get my my cloths today. As he went created 200 cage bunshin and broke them into groups and had them start working on chakra control as well as the academy 3 which to Naruto shock some of his bunshin actually looked normal. When Naruto got back to town he walked into a shop and the man behind the counter said, get out. Naruto frowned and said, but. The man said, look, I have the right to refuse service to anyone I want and I refuse service to you, now get out. Naruto turned and left and thought, asshole. Two hours later Naruto was walking down the road with his hands and fist with blood leaking out of them while thinking, stupid, goddamn, motherfucking, son of a bitches, cocksucking, assholes who should burn in hell. Unknown to Naruto he was releasing ki which was causing everyone to become scared of him or move away from him, or were frozen in place as he walked down the road. This was the site Team 9 came across as they returned to Konoha. Guy seeing this frowned and said, Team, please stay here a moment. As he saw the blood coming out of Naruto's fist and he moved over to Naruto and said, Hello. As he tried to get Naruto attention by touching him on the shoulder. Naruto was so caught up in his rant inside his head he didn't hear Guy. Dot but he did stop and blink when he felt Guy's hand. Naruto looked up and blinked and screamed, Ah, face eating caterpillars. As he took off running. Tenton covered her mouth to stop from laughing while Neji lip twitched and Lee said, that is unyouthful. Guy frowned and said, come team, we must see what is bothering that youthful young man. As Naruto was running away he looked back and saw Guy chasing him and he thought, shit, what the hell. I was minding my own business when oh shit. As his eyes widened and screamed, Eno look out. Eno was planting some flowers in a window box flower planter in front of a three-story apartment complex when a shout of, Eno look out caught her attention before she found herself being shoved to the side. Eno screamed in shock not realizing what was happening as she fell to the ground. As Eno looked where she used to be her eyes widened and screamed, Dad. As she saw Naruto on the ground with blood coming out of his head from where the window box from one of the higher windows came loose from the building and fell where she used to be. As Inoichi came out of the building his eyes widened and quickly moved to Naruto body and said, What happened to Naruto, Eno? This was the sight team guy came across as they arrived. Guy quickly moved beside Inoichi and said, how is he Inoichi? Inoichi said, unsure, he's got a head injury. We need to get him to the hospital. When Naruto awoke he found himself in a long dark tunnel and thought, what the hell, where am I, as he looked around confused before the world around him shimmered and then Naruto blinked as a light appeared and got bigger and bigger before suddenly the huge face of the Yandaimi Hokage appeared, alive. Naruto thought, ah, what the hell. In fright, Naruto then saw as a red hair woman appeared in his vision and Naruto thought, holy shit. This is my birth. That's my mother. Naruto then watched as he was handed to a woman who he recognized from a photo on the Sandame's desk as the Sandame's wife and then watched as the woman was killed and he was being held hostage. 
then rescued while his mother was taken away and then as he was placed somewhere safe before Minato came back and took him to where his mother was and then he heard Thier words and saw the Sandame arrive before the Kayubi was sealed inside him. Naruto saw the world change around him and then everything went black. Later when Naruto awoke he blinked as he found himself in a hospital bed and he frowned and thought, what happened? That was a memory, my first memories. Dot huh, a flower. Who gave me that? Oh yeah, I pushed Ino out of the way and got hit in the head. I guess she gave it to me. As he saw a flower in a vase beside his bed and he smiled slightly. The door to the room opened and a nurse looked in and frowned and said, you're awake, leave now. Before slamming the door close. Naruto frowned and thought, bitch. As his good mood was ruined. Naruto quickly got out of bed and found that he was in his cloths that had blood on them and thought, they didn't even put me in a hospital gown. That did it. I'm sick of this shit. As he left the hospital. After leaving the hospital Naruto thought, I'm tired of this shit. I can't leave or Akatasuki will come after me. Also I need to get stronger, so that's what I will do. I'll get strong enough to protect myself and then leave. But I'm not putting up with this shit anymore. Dot HMM. I wonder. An hour later Naruto was looking at the summoning seals on the black stone and using the knowledge of the books on seals thought, hmm. That is the part that regulates the time. That's the distance limit seal. That is the power limit. I could do this. Three hours later Naruto was looking at the modified seal he had just drawn based on the summoning seal and thought, oh. Okay. My handwriting sucks. Now that I know it sucks I need to practice that if I am going to honor my family. Dot but that is going to have to wait. This was my last scroll I have. I have to make it to another village to get some cloths, food, and supplies. If Konoha doesn't want my money, others will. Dot, but how do I do it? This will only get me one way. I guess I could create a cage bunshin and have it in my apartment to summon me back. I'll sneak out tonight. The next morning Naruto saw a village gates and thought, oh, okay. I said it once, I hate that village. It was easy as hell to sneak out of the village. Luckily the next village is only 10 miles away. After entering the village Naruto's stomach growled and Naruto thought, Let's see if I can't find something to eat. Naruto saw a little restaurant and entered it and entered it and sat down at a table and a waitress came over and said, Hello young man, are you waiting on someone? Naruto said, No, I just came to town to do some shopping and thought I would get some breakfast. The waitress said, Well you came to the right place. Our specials are biscuit and gravy for $1.50 or our sampler platter with one beckon, one sasuage, one egg, one piece of toast, and a bowl of rice for $5.50. Naruto said, I'll try the sampler with a glass of water. A female voice said, make that two, separate tickets though. Causing Naruto to blink and look to his right as a girl in a Chinese style shirt and a pair of brown shorts with brown hair and a pair of buns on her head. Naruto frowned as he saw the Konoha high 8 and the girl said, I'm surprised to see you here after your head injury Naruto. Naruto asked, do I know you, in a calm voice. The girl sat down across from him and said, no, the name's Tenten. My sensei was the eyebrow monster that scared you before you got hurt. Dot how are you? Naruto said, fine. Dot how do you know my name? In a neutral tone, Tenten said, I heard the two Yamanakas call you Naruto after you saved the girl. I'm surprised to see you up and all the way here in just two days. Naruto said, what can I say, I heal fast. With a smirk, Tenten said, you don't like me do you? Naruto said, it's not you. Tenten asked, then what is it about me that makes you seem like a jerk? Naruto blinked and said, am I? Tenten glared and said, yes, as soon as you saw me you lost your smile and cheerfulness, you became guarded and now act like you want to get as far away from me as you can. Naruto frowned and said, what are you doing here? Tenten said, my team and I are on our way back from a mission. We decided to stop here for the night and I was getting some breakfast before we left when I saw you and decided to see how you are. My mistake, as if she was offended. T. Naruto sighed and said, I'm sorry, it's not you. I. I just got some personal issues dealing with something right now and when I saw your hiate it reminded me about what I was trying to forget for the moment. Tenten said, want to talk about it. Just then the waitress returned with the food and set it down and said, enjoy. After she was gone Naruto thought a moment and said, what would you do if you found out your entire life was a lie? That the people you thought you could trust you find out has been lying to you and using you. Tenten said, well, I guess I would find out the truth and then find out why they lied and decide what to do then. You could also find someone you could trust and ignore the ones who lied to you. Naruto snorts and said, you make it sound easy. In a mocking tone, Tenten said, it is easy. In a scolding tone, Naruto said, you're Neve. In a defensive tone, Tenten said, hey, I am not Neve. You're just an idiot. Why else would you wear orange? Naruto frowned and grabbed his plate and quickly began to eat. Tenten seeing this frowned and said, sorry for whatever I said to upset you. 
Naruto who had finished his plate quickly pulled out some cash and threw it on the table and said, I would expect nothing else from a Konoha citizen or ninja. As he turned and left, Tenten frowned and quickly threw some money on the table not even touching her food and quickly followed Naruto and when she got to him she said, what the hell that's supposed to mean? Naruto said, just leave me alone, your team's probably waiting for you, as he turned and started to walk away. Naruto sighed and said, I'm sorry, it's not you, I. I just got some personal issues dealing with something right now and when I saw your hiatus it reminded me about what I was trying to forget for the moment. Tenten said, want to talk about it. Just then the waitress returned with the food and set it down and said, enjoy. After she was gone Naruto thought a moment and said, what would you do if you found out your entire life was a lie? That the people you thought you could trust you find out has been lying to you and using you. Tenten said, well, I guess I would find out the truth and then find out why they lied and decide what to do then. You could also find someone you could trust and ignore the ones who lied to you. Naruto snorts and said, you make it sound easy. In a mocking tone, Tenten said, it is easy. In a scolding tone, Naruto said, you're Neve. In a defensive tone, Tenten said, hey, I am not Neve. You're just an idiot. Why else would you wear orange? Naruto frowned and grabbed his plate and quickly began to eat. Tenten seeing this frowned and said, sorry for whatever I said to upset you. Naruto who had finished his plate quickly pulled out some cash and threw it on the table and said, I would expect nothing else from a Konoha citizen or ninja. As he turned and left, Tenten frowned and quickly threw some money on the table not even touching her food and quickly followed Naruto and when she got to him she said, what the hell that's supposed to mean? Naruto said, just leave me alone, your team's probably waiting for you, as he turned and started to walk away. Tenten began to walk beside him and Naruto frowned and glanced around and saw an ally between two buildings that allowed for walking between roads he walked toward it and when they were halfway down the ally Naruto turned shocking Tenten as he grabbed her arms and said, what do you want? In clenched teeth, Tenten who was shocked and surprised said, I wanted to find out what you were so pissed off about. You act like you hate Konoha or something. I want to find out why. Naruto said, you want to know why I am pissed? You want to know why I hate Konoha? You want to know the truth? You can't handle the truth, so go fuck yourself buns. As he jumped up onto the wall and jumped up on the roof. Tenten face turned bright red and she glared at the roof and thought, nobody talks to me like that or grabs me like that. She quickly got on the roof and ran to where she saw Naruto was and as he landed on the ground on the next ally she landed right in front of him and said, who the hell do you think you are talking to me like that? Naruto said, god damn it, Shikamaru was right, women are troublesome. As he rolled his eyes. In Konoha Shikamaru sneezed. Naruto glared at Tenten and said, Look, I tried to be nice. I tried to be blunt but you don't seem to get the message. I want to be left alone by you and everyone else from that shithole of a village called Konoha. Now get out of my face or else. Tenten sneered and said, Or else what? I'm a ninja and you're just a pathetic weak dead last academy student who can't even graduate. Naruto thought, I am not putting up with hers or anyone else's shit ever again. You want some, come get some bitch. As he created a cage bunshin without hand signs and appeared behind Tenten who hearing the pop of it arriving jumped but as she did the cage bunshin who was going to give her twin chops to the shoulders to hit the pressure points there that he read about instead hit both her ass cheeks from her jumping up causing her to fly into a trash can behind the real Naruto due to the strength of the slaps. Tenten whose face turned bright red while being covered in trash screamed, I'm going to kill you. As she released some key, the cage bunshin got into a defensive stance while the real one screamed, catch me if you can buns. As he ran out of the ally and as he rounded the corner created another cage bun shin while the real one hanged into his mother and walked into a store while the cage bun shin ran down the street at a slow pace. Tenten who got out of the trash threw a kanai at the clone who dodged but was hit by the five others that she threw dispelling it before she took off running after Naruto. As she saw him she screamed, die. As she took off running. The cage bun shin hearing her scream took off running as fast as it could toward the edge of the village and into the woods with Tenten following him. The real Naruto chuckled as he saw this and thought, who's the idiot now bitch? Before walking out of the store and back into an ally and released the henge before walking into a clothing store he saw across the street. As he walked in a teenage brown hair, green eyes girl around 5 feet 6 was standing behind the counter said, ah, welcome to Shimmer's clothing. How can I help you sir? Naruto said, I'm looking for some cloths. You wouldn't happen to have shinobi clothing would you? The girl said, yes we do. Are you a shinobi? Naruto said, no, not yet. I just do a lot of activities and wear cloths out quickly miss. The girl said, my name is Aki Um. Naruto said, Naruto, it's nice to meet you. So do you think you could help me find some cloths? The last place I had to get cloths didn't have anything that would hold up to any hard labor besides this thing so I only got it for lack of options. With disgust on his face, 
Aki said, well you come to the right place. Though I think that most of our cloths will have to be customized for you since we don't get very many people your height. Naruto chuckled and said, yeah, I catch a lot of grief over my height. So will you be able to help me? Aki said, sure, how much clothing are you looking to get? Naruto said, an entire wardrobe. Aki eyes widened and walked to the door and locked the door which caused Naruto to raise an eyebrow and Aki said, well I want to show you that you made the right choice choosing my humble store for your service so I will give you my full attention Naruto-sama. Naruto said, just Naruto please Aki-chan. I hate formalities. People think they are supposed to be respected for some stupid title when they themselves hadn't done anything to deserve respect. Aki smiled and said, well if you're going to call me Chan then how about I call you Naruto-kun then. Naruto said, I am in your hands Aki-chan. With a kind smile, Aki said, then please follow me to the back, when you said entire wardrobe, as she blushed slightly as they entered the back room. Naruto said, I meant I want new everything. I've decided it's time for a new start on life and I figured the best place to start would be with my looks. Aki said, sure, then I guess the best place to start would be to take your measurements and start with what's underneath first so if you would walk into the middle of the strip down to your undergarments then I can take your measurements and we can start with your underwear. Boxers or briefs? Naruto who was taking off his cloth spit his lip and said, I'm not sure, can I be honest with you Aki-chan? Aki who had grab a tailor tape turned and said, sure. Naruto said, well, I'm kind of embarrassed to say this but until a few months ago I was just another poor orphan who wasn't adopted and lived off the small orphan allowance the village I lived in gave to those who were too old to be adopted. All the cloths I had were what little I could actually get while paying for my rent, food, and supplies. I don't know really anything about cloths besides to get things that will last through a lot of wear and tear because I couldn't afford to buy a lot. Usually if I did then I went without food for a day or two. Dot but that changed recently. I didn't know about my family or anything. Dot but recently I got a sort of inheritance you could say as well as some info about my mother and her family. My family well is now all but gone was once a clan from another country. The scroll I got told me basically that it's up to me to decide the fate of my clan and its future. I want to try and make my family and clan proud if I can, even if they are all dead. The gray, black, and blue were my clan colors but it's not bright blue it's like a dull blue if that makes any sense. I don't know cloths that well and I don't know fashion either. All I know about cloths is that I want them to last as long as possible while looking good to honor my family. I will trust your expert knowledge to help me do that. Aki looked at Naruto and took a deep breath and said, I see. There's an old saying in the clothing business, cloths makes the man. What you wear shows others what you are. You are deemed either a success or failure not only by the way you do things but also how you present yourself to others. If two people of equal skills wanted a job the employer would chose the one who is dressed more in line for the job they are applying for. Does that make sense to you? Naruto nods and Aki said, alright, then before we get started on getting you cloths as to know what are you going to do. You said you're from a clan. Do you want to represent yourself as a clan or a civilian? By going with your clan colors is a step in the right direction for honoring your clan but what does your clan stand for or what do you want your clan to stand for? What strengths and skills do you want to represent for your clan and yourself? Does your clan have a symbol or affinity toward something? What does your clan do? Naruto thought a moment and said, well, my clan symbol was a whirlpool spiral but I want to change it slightly to where it has a dot at the four directions of north, south, east, and west. My clan was known for sealing abilities though I've only recently started to learn about seals. Um, I don't know about affinity, but I would guess water. My clan was originally from an island nation. Aki nods and said, hmm. As she grabbed a pencil and a notebook and quickly began to draw on it before she asked, so what are your plans for the future of your clan? What will your clan do? Naruto who was standing in his a pair of frog boxers and said, I, I don't know. As he bit his lip and asked, what do other clans actually do? I, damn it, I must sound like an idiot. As he put his palm to his head and pinched the bridge of his nose. Aki giggled seeing this and said, a little but you have a reason for not knowing. Well I guess I could tell you what I know hearing about clans from Konoha. The Aburame clan is a clan of bug users and are actually known for thier silk they produce. Dot the Akamichi are among the best cooks in the world. Dot the Yamanaka raise and sell plants, herbs, and other plants that are used for poison and healing salves. Um, that's all I can think of, sorry. As she looked sheepish, Naruto said, no, that's alright. You helped me more than you know. So each clan has a certain skill that they are known for outside of combat. As he looked down and thought. Aki said, I guess I'm not that helpful. Naruto looked at her and said, no, you've been really helpful. I guess there is a lot I don't know about a lot of things. I don't know what skills I could claim as a skill. Aki interrupted him and said, well, what do you do? I mean, how do you plan to support yourself? I mean you can't live off your inheritance all your life, dot can you? 
Naruto said, no, I guess I'll be a ninja, my family was. Aki said, well there's nothing wrong with that. Dot you trust me right? Naruto said, sure, I told you I'm in your hands. Aki smiled and said, then I think I know what to do with you though it will take a while. Naruto said, well, I've got nothing better to do so I'm all yours. Aki said, well in that case let me get to work and why don't you tell me about yourself. Things you like, dislike, things you do for hubbies. Naruto asked, why? Aki said, well, because this is going to take hours and you're going to get bored as hell waiting for me to get done so I thought if you told me about yourself we could talk and get to know each other and that will help pass time. Naruto said, well, alright I guess. As he began to tell about himself, mostly the pranks and few good memories he had. Four hours later Naruto stood where he had been the last four hours and was in pieces of different cloths while Aki had a needle and thread in her hand with the tailor's tape in her mouth when Naruto's stomach growled and Aki giggled and said, sounds like the beast is hungry. Naruto's face went pale a moment and then thought, no, she doesn't know, she's just joking about my stomach. And said, are you hungry also? Aki looked up and said, yeah, a little though I can't quit at. Whoa, how did you do that? As a cage bunshin appeared dressed in normal cloths. Naruto said, it's a jutsu I learned from my clan scroll. It's a solid clone. Just tell him what you want and he'll go get you something. My treat. Aki said, well, thank you, does it matter where at? Naruto said, no but I'm not from here. I've only had breakfast at the little restaurant near the edge of town on the east side. Aki said, ah, Azumi place, yeah that's a good place. Um, if you're sure you don't mind. Naruto gave her a look and she giggled and said, right, I'll take a chicken salad and a glass of tea from Azumi place. Naruto said, take some money and get something I would like. The cage bun shin nods and grabs some money from Naruto wallet and leaves. After the cage bun shin left Aki said, you know, you have a lot to learn about women Naruto-kun. Naruto said, really, like what? Aki said, well for starters, women can be just as mischievous and devious as you can Mr. Prankster. Naruto said, oh, talking from experience are we. Do tell. As he smiled at her, Aki blushed and began to tell him a few stories. As the day moved on both Aki and Naruto both laughed and joked getting to know each other as she made his cloths. As Aki cut the last thread on a shirt she said, there we go. All done finally. As she smiled sadly at him, Naruto's smile faded a little and said, I want to thank you for everything you've done for me today Aki, you don't know how much I will treasure this day. Aki smiled and said, well first tell me what you think. As she pointed toward the wall size mirror behind Naruto who turned and looked at himself in the mirror. Naruto saw himself standing in a pair of grey pants with two black black stripes and a blue strap starting at his hips together and then began spiraling around each leg separating so the spirals start off grey then black then grey, then blue, then grey, then black, then grey on each leg. He had on a mostly grey shirt with off blue around the bottom, and the end of the sleeves. On top of that he had a black jacket with a blue spiral with grey points with reverse spirals at the four compass points. Naruto smiled and thought, I look badass. Aki seeing the look on Naruto face said, I'm glad you like it. So, if you really want to pay me back for today how about going and get us some dinner to show off your new cloths and tell everyone I made them, then come back and have dinner with me. I'll clean up while you're gone. If I finish before you get back I live right upstairs and I'll give you the key to get back in the front door. I need to know if I need to make any alterations to that outfit. If I don't then I can make 5 more outfits like that but what I will do is alternate the colors where this one is primary gray. I'll make another like it and then make two that are primary black and two that are primary blue and adjust the colors right. That sound good to you. Naruto said, sure, that sound real good. What would you like to eat? Aki said, surprise me. You know a lot about me, let's see how well you listened. With a smile, Naruto said, I would be honored. As he bowed slightly, Aki laughed and pulled out a key and handed it to him and Naruto said, be back shortly. Before he left. After Naruto left Aki quickly began to move around the area she had been tailoring Naruto and grabbing the notebook with the measurements she would need and quickly ran up to her apartment. It was 30 minutes later when Naruto walked up the stairs to the living area of Aki home and knocked on the door. When he did Aki opened the door and Naruto's eyes widened slightly as he saw Aki had changed her cloths as well as put on some makeup as well as put up her hair. Naruto blushed and said, wow, you look lovely Aki-chan. Aki said, thank you Naruto-kun, won't you come in? As she stepped to the side, Naruto nods and came in and as he looked around he said, nice place. Aki said, thank you. Here, let me take those. As she grabbed the takeout plates and moved to the table. Naruto remember Aki stories decided to pull out the chair for her and she smiled and sat down and said, thank you. Naruto said, you're welcome. Um. Aki said, yes Naruto-kun. Naruto asked, what, I mean. 
Aki sighed and said, I'm tired of being alone and I thought that it would be nice to have dinner with you. I think you're a rather handsome young man and I. I thought it would be nice to think of it as a date in, as she blushed. Naruto swallowed and looked at Aki and said, I'm nothing special Aki-chan, you on the other hand are a very beautiful and kind lady who any guy would be honored and lucky to go on a date with you, including me. Aki's eyes widened and a tear fell from the corner of her eyes and said, thank you, shall we? As she blushed and lowered her head, Naruto said, sure, as they both began to eat the sushi and onigiri. Once they finished Aki threw the plates away and when she came back into the room she walked up behind Naruto and wrapped her arms around him and whispered, thank you for a lovely evening. Dot but the night's still young. Naruto looked confused as Aki gently took his hand and said seductively, come. Naruto got up and followed Aki. The next morning Naruto awoke feeling a weight on his chest and saw a mess of brown hair laying on his chest and it took a moment before the events of the previous day came back to him and Naruto thought, you're right Aki-chan. Women can be even more deceptive and mischievous than any man. Half an hour later Aki awoke and moved her head and moaned, morning. In a tired voice, Naruto said, morning Aki-chan. As he looked at her where he had watched her sleep, Aki pushed herself over Naruto body and sat up and back with a smirk and said, looks like the beast is awake also. Naruto groaned as he felt the beast greeting Aki as well. After some morning stretches, Naruto was in the shower and thought, damn, I wish I could stay here with her, maybe. As he bit his lip, after getting dressed in his new clothes Naruto walked into the living room and smelled breakfast and Aki who came out of the kitchen with two plates smiled and sat them on the table and walked over and put her arms around Naruto's shoulders and kissed him passionately. Naruto moaned and pulled her closer causing Aki to moan as well. Once they both broke the kiss Aki said, breakfast is ready. Naruto nods and sat down at the table and as both began to eat and Naruto blushed and said, I enjoyed spending time with you Aki. Aki said, and I enjoyed spending time with you as well Naruto-kun, it's way better than my time with my husband. Saying husband in disgust, Naruto choked on his eggs and coughed out husband. Aki sighed and said, let me explain, please. Naruto frowned but nods and Aki said, three years ago my parents forced me into an arranged marriage with a rich businessman by the name of Gato, owner of Gato Shipping Company. This shop was our family business and has been for nearly 50 years. Dot, but then all our supplies were taken over by Gato Company and prices were increased on everything as well as new taxes were placed on items. It wasn't long before we became too far in debt to keep going and was going to lose our home and business. Gato men came and was going to seize everything and force us into slavery when my parents made a deal with him. I don't know all the details but what I do know is both my parents never returned and I got a scroll telling me I was Gato wife though I have never seen him. I have to make a deposit into a bank account every month of $2000. If I don't then someone comes and breaks into the store downstairs and damages things. Naruto frowned and said, what happened to your parents? Aki sighed and said, I don't know, I think they are dead or slaves. Naruto looked down and said, I don't want you to be hurt Aki. You've become important to me. I think I might love you but I don't know since I've never felt this way before but I do care for you. Aki smiled and said, I know, and I care about you as well. My time with you has been the happiest of my life since my parents left. Naruto bit his lip and said, you can't stay here. It's not safe. Aki blinked and said, what? Naruto said, I won't let you get hurt. I don't want Gato or his men to get their filthy hands on you. I'll protect you Aki. Aki blushed as she put her hand to her chest and said, but. Naruto shook his head and said, no, I won't let anything happen to you. I won't lose anyone I care about. I'll die to protect you Aki. With a powerful tone in his voice. Aki looked down and said, I can't. I have no place to go, my entire life is wrapped around this shop. It's my home, my history, my legacy. Dot you told me about your clan, how you want to honor it and your family. Well I also want to honor mine the same way. Naruto closed his eyes as tears started to form and said, but Gato owns it. You've already lost it. Buildings and objects can be replaced easily, you can start over somewhere else. Dot but lives can be replaced like that. If you die then your legacy, your history, your parents legacy is gone. Please, please come with me. You can live with me. I'll take care of you. I'll take you as my wife and give you all my love and give you everything you could want and need. Aki smiled and said, Naruto-kun, thank you. Naruto said with hope in his voice, so you agree. Aki said, yes. I'll start a new life somewhere else, but I have to wait a few days before I can. I need to pack up my things and pay off all my bills and finish the last of my orders for my customers and tell my friends goodbye. Naruto pulled out his wallet and said, how much do you need Aki, I'll help you pay for everything. Aki said, oh um, I'm not sure. As she bit her lip, Naruto said, well, here, if you need more then let me know, as he handed her 
Aki eyes widened and said, but. Naruto said, no, I promised you that I would take care of you and that's what I'm going to do. Naruto Uzumaki doesn't go back on his word, that's my ninja way. Aki eyes softened and said, then make me a promise. Naruto said, anything Aki-chan. Aki said, promise me that you will live a long and happy life no matter how hard things get or what obstacles stand in your way. That you will show the world the greatness and honor of the Uzumaki clan. Naruto smiled and said, I promise. Aki said, good, then I guess this is where we part ways then. Naruto blinked and his smile faded and said, what? What do you mean? Aki thought a moment and quickly said, well, I have things I have to do that will take a few days and you will have to get things ready for the future where you live, right? Naruto said, um, yeah, I guess you're right. Aki said, of course I am. So why don't we agree to meet back here next Saturday? I'll give you the key and you can let yourself in and I'll spend the week packing and getting ready. How's that sound? Naruto said, smart and beautiful. I'm glad I met you Aki-chan. I'll even get a few scrolls that I can seal your stuff in so we can move it easier. How's that sound? Aki who blushed said, that sounds great. So why don't you head on out and get ready and I'll clean up here and then start doing what I got to do. Naruto said, are you sure you don't need any help? Aki said, trust me Naruto-kun. Naruto said, alright, I'll see you in a week. Goodbye Aki-chan. As he got up and kissed her before creating a cage bunshin which dispelled and a few moments later Naruto frowned as he got the memory of the cage bunshin and Konoha activating the scroll before it was killed by the scroll not working right. He sighed and thought, looks like I'll have to work on that as he smiled one last time to Aki and left. Aki walked to the window and watched him leave and after he was gone Aki's smile slipped from her face. As Naruto thought about what all had happened so far he thought, I can't remember my life ever being better than it is now. Oh crap, Aki doesn't know about Kayubi, will she hate me? Shit, what about the villagers, will they hurt her to hurt me? What am I going to do? As he slowed down and began to think, it was nighttime when Naruto saw the walls to the village come into view and thought, well here goes. As he approached the walls he was immediately surrounded by a squad of Anbu. Naruto frowned and an Anbu in an Inu mask said, Naruto Uzumaki, you are to come with us to the Hokage office immediately. Naruto frowned and said, fine. In a neutral tone, Inu walked over and placed his hand on Naruto's shoulder and then both were gone in a swirl of leaves. The next moment Naruto found himself in the Hokage office. The Sandame Hokage was looking out of the window to his office looking at the village when they arrived and turned and said, Ah Inu, I see you found him. Where was he? Inu said, my squad caught him just outside the village walls heading back toward the village. The Sandame said, I see, you're dismissed Inu. Inu nods and shushions away and the Sandame who was looking at Naruto and his cloth said, Hello Naruto, how are you? Naruto said, a little tired. Hiruzen Serutobi said, yes, I was surprised to hear that you were in Sacho especially after sneaking out of the hospital. Naruto blinked and said, sneak out. The nurse opened the door, saw me awake, and never even entered the room from the doorframe and said, you're awake get out now, while screaming the last word at me. She looked angry that I was awake also. Hiruzen said, you wouldn't happen to know what her name was, do you? Naruto said, no but I can henge into her though I don't see why you care. As he was covered in smoke. When the smoke cleared Naruto was hanged into the nurse who had told him to leave in the Sandame remember the nurse as Naruto released the henge and Naruto yawned and said, well if that's all I'm going to bed. As he turned and started toward the door, Hiruzen said, but we're not done talking. Why did you leave the village? Naruto stopped and said, does it matter why I left? I left. I'm an adult according to you and the council and I'm a civilian. If I decide to leave and not come back it's my choice. I've got nothing tying me to the village. Hiruzen said, but what about your friends? Naruto snorts and said, what friends? Name one. Hiruzen said, um. Well, I don't know, I have so many things to remember as Hokage it's hard for me to remember your friend's name you told me about but I do know that you have some. Like Tuchi and Ayame Ichiruka. Naruto said, well it's nice talking to you but as you said you're busy being the Hokage so I will go. As he reached for the handle of the door. Hiruzen said, you're not leaving until I tell you that you can. Naruto frowned and said, why not? I'm not one of your ninja to order around. Hiruzen frowned and took a moment to compose himself and said, you attacked one of my ninja. Naruto blinked and said, no I didn't. Hiruzen said, you attacked a genin named Tenten. Naruto face changed from confused to neutral and said, maybe you should get all your facts straight before you make an accusation Hokage-sama. Just like you were wrong about me sneaking out of the hospital you're wrong on this as well. I tried on several occasions to leave and get away from her but she refused to leave me alone so I had no choice but to defend myself. Hiruzen frowned and said, why were you in Sacho? Naruto said, well if you really must know, I can't get food or cloths in this village as everyone seems to hate me for some reason. 
I tried to go in nearly every store in this village to get things I need and I was told either they had the right to refuse service or get out before we finish what the Yandaimi started, laws be damned, whatever that's supposed to mean. Hiruzen clenched his fist and thought, no, they couldn't be doing that, would they? Naruto said, anyways as I said, since I couldn't get cloths here I left to find someplace I could, and I'll tell you this, I enjoyed it a lot. People not glaring at me, friendly smiles, delicious food. I could get used to that. Maybe even move there. As he smiled, Hiruzen hearing this frowned and thought, this isn't good. I need to think of something. And said, but this is your home. Naruto snorts and said, no, it's not. A home is some place that you feel safe at and a place where you friends and family are. All three are things I don't have here. Hiruzen closed his eyes and Naruto yawned and said, why don't we skip the bullshit? I can dance around about all the bullshit Konoha done to me and make you realize how much of it is your fault. You're hiding things from me, I'm hiding things from you. You don't know what I'm hiding and what I know. I know things you don't know. It's up to you where you want to go from here. As he crossed his arms. Hiruzen said, I think you should remember who you are talking to Naruto. In a strong tone, Naruto said, you know, the cage bunshin no jutsu is really interesting jutsu. It allows you to be in two places at once and with the memory transfer part of it you know what is happening in both places. I go pop, you lose the only lead as to what really happened to your wife the day I was born. Hiruzen hearing this frowned and thought, this isn't good. I need to think of something. And said, but this is your home. Naruto snorts and said, no, it's not. A home is some place that you feel safe at and a place where you friends and family are. All three are things I don't have here. Hiruzen closed his eyes and Naruto yawned and said, why don't we skip the bullshit? I can dance around about all the bullshit Konoha done to me and make you realize how much of it is your fault. You're hiding things from me, I'm hiding things from you. You don't know what I'm hiding and what I know. I know things you don't know. It's up to you where you want to go from here. As he crossed his arms. Hiruzen said, I think you should remember who you are talking to Naruto. In a strong tone, Naruto said, you know, the cage bunshin no jutsu is really interesting jutsu. It allows you to be in two places at once and with the memory transfer part of it you know what is happening in both places. I go pop, you lose the only lead as to what really happened to your wife the day I was born. Hiruzen eyes widen a moment and said, you're bluffing, you don't know the cage bunshin no jutsu. Two puffs of smoke appeared in the room and Hiruzen saw two other Naruto standing there before they went up in smoke and that Naruto, who entered the office said, now I lost most of my chakra I had meaning you got less time to talk to me before I go pop and you have to deal with what happens after that. With a smirk, Hiruzen frowned and said, why are you hostile toward me after everything I have done for you? Naruto said, him. Well it could be because you lied to my face more times than I can count like Kayubi, Kashina, Minato, Mito Uzumaki Senju, the Uzumaki clan of Whirlpool. Or it could be because of Danzo. Or maybe it might even be something else like a group of s rank missing ninja who want to suck the Kayubi out of me killing me and use it to destroy Konoha. It could be also that I've found something while out of Konoha that is more important to me than everything in Konoha put together and I want to protect it. Dot who knows. The question is what the great professor is going to do to fix this problem. Hiruzen who had listened to Naruto said, what is it you want or hope to achieve? As he thought, what all does he know? Naruto sighed and said, well, I want to know the truth. I've been told so much shit from so many angles but everyone I've heard from only knows bits and pieces of the full story. You're the only person I can think who knows the full story, but I doubt you will give me the full story, if any. As he walked over and looked out the window and said, I'll tell you flat out, I'm scared to death of the village right now. I met someone I care about, and I'm scared that if I bring her to Konoha to be with me that people will hurt her to hurt me. Hiruzen said, they won't do that. Naruto looked at him and said, really, how do you sleep at night knowing that my family has protected this village since it was founded and thanks to you I'm seen as a weapon at best and a demon at worst by the so-called innocent people here. Before I met the girl I did I was honestly thinking about just using as much chakra as I can, use the cage bunshin no jutsu to make hundreds of them and just attack every man, woman, and child here while also doing as much damage as I can before I've been taken out. My cage bunshin can use cage bunshin as well to make even more so I might even be able to make one for every person in the village. Hiruzen said, you would hurt everyone for no reason. Naruto said, no reason, no reason. Maybe if you got your old lazy ass out of this office and looked around you would see I have every reason to hate the people of this village. See as they make my life hell. I am what they made me. I am who and what they raised me to be. The villagers are my parents and if a parent abuses their child doesn't the child grow up resenting and hating their parents and do to others what happened to them. That sure as hell what the medical book I read said. Hell, I hate my birthday because I spend it hiding, while the rest of the village celebrates I have to be scared if I'm even going to see another day. Fuck it, I'll tell you what. 
Your wife died having a kanai shoved through her skull before I was used as a hostage to separate my dad from my mom so the guy who killed your wife could release the Kayubi on Konoha. You want to know who the guy is then fix this problem. I'll have a cage bun shin henge hiding in the village tomorrow till 1 pm. You make some kind of announcement revealing the truth about the Uzumaki clan and my parents making it where I can restore my clan and protect my family and not have to live in fear of those idiots or I'll hand myself over to the group that wants the Kayubi which the man who killed your wife is a part of and let them destroy this fucking town. Your choice professor. As he went up in smoke. Hiruzen screamed, Anbu. Several Anbu appeared and Hiruzen said, I want every available Anbu to find Naruto Uzumaki and bring him to me. Go. After they were gone Hiruzen frowned and thought, what am I going to do? The next day at noon Hiruzen sighed and rubbed his eyes and thought, where are you at Naruto? Even Kakashi using his Sharingan can't find you or your cage Bunshin. I don't even know what you know but you know enough clues to make me worried. I have no choice. And said, Anbu. Inform the village there will be an announcement in 30 minutes in front of the tower. After the Anbu were gone Hiruzen thought, it looks like I will have to go with that idea after all. Dot too bad I won't live to see how well it goes. I guess I should inform the proper people. 30 minutes later the Sandame Hokage walked out onto a balcony on top of the Hokage tower and said, People of Konoha, I wish to thank you all for coming here today for the announcement I am about to make. A few murmurs broke out in the crowd and Hiruzen said, Now I am sure many of you are wondering what this announcement is about. This announcement is about a secret that goes back to before the village of Konoha was founded that has been kept all these years. Some of you may be wondering why I am telling this secret now and the answer is because my time as your Hokage is nearly over and I will be stepping down soon. At this nearly every eye in the village went wide and many murmurs broke out. After the crowd was silenced by Hiruzen raising his hand and he said, Now many of you are wondering who will be the Godem Hokage and to tell you the truth I have narrowed that list down to three individuals and I will inform you about all three who I am deciding on. I have already sent a message to the Fire Lord informing him of my choices. Dot the first candidate is Hitaki Kakashi. For those of you who don't know him or of him Kakashi is the son of the White Fang of Konoha Sakumo Hitaki. Kakashi graduated from the academy at the age of 5, became a chunin at the age of 6, and a junin at the age of 13. Kakashi is the only living student of the Yandaimi Hokage. Kakashi is also known as the copy cat ninja due to the fact he is said to have copied over 1000 jutsu in his career. He is a highly skilled leader who has completed over 1000 successful missions in his career and has the respect of many ninja both here in Konoha as well as other villages. On one of the building Inu thought, what the hell is going on? Why didn't he ask me? Hiruzen thought, bet Kakashi is having a panic attack right now. After calming the crowd Hiruzen said, now I will tell you about the next candidate for the position of Hokage. The next is Jiraiya Oil of the legendary Sanin. Jiraiya graduated from the academy at the age of 6, became a chunin at 9, and a junin at 14. Jiraiya was a student of myself and was the teacher of the Yandaimi Hokage of Konoha. Jiraiya is also the only person in our village history besides the Shodem Hokage Hashirama Senju to reach the status of a sage. He is the only person outside of the Yandaimi to have the toad summoning contract. He has completed over 1500 missions in his career for our village and has helped protect our village through two different shinobi wars. He is both respected by our allies and our enemies for not only his skills as a shinobi but also as Konoha best spymaster. In the crowd Danzo thought, he is also a pervert and an idiot who is not fit to be Hokage. Hiruzen waited until the crowd was quitted down again and said, now I will tell you the final candidate for the position of Hokage. The final choice is Tsunade Senju. Tsunade is the granddaughter of the Shodem Hokage Hashirama Senju and the great grand niece of Naidem Hokage Toboramu Sinu. Tsunade graduated the academy at the age of 6, Chunin at 9, Junin at 15. Like Jiraiya, Tsunade was also one of my students and is also one of the famous Sanins. She possessed the slug summoning contract and has completed over 1200 missions for Konoha. Tsunade is known as the world's greatest healers in the world as she is often thought of as the mother of modern medicine. Now many of you I am sure would be honored to have any of the three candidates as the Godem Hokage. Dot, but there is something that has been hidden all these years about two of these people that even they do not know. Dot, the secret is that Tsunade Senju and Jiraiya Oil were in fact the parents of Minato Namikaze, the Yandaimi Hokage of Konoha. At this nearly every eye in the crowd went wide and a bird fell off a building and when it hit the ground it went up in smoke. Luckily the other birds were able to stay where they were. It took 10 minutes for the murmurs to be brought under control before Hiruzen was able to speak again and Hiruzen said, I am sure you are all wondering how that is possible or how neither of them could know of being his parent. Dot the reason they don't know is because of the secret I mentioned that goes back to before the founding of Konoha. 
The secret that was the cause of the First Great Shinobi War. A secret that is linked to the Kayubi attack on our village. A secret that has saved this village since it was founded and a secret that now threatens to destroy our village. A secret that I have killed to keep. Dot the secret that every Konoha Shinobi wears on Theor High 8 in honor of the sacrifice that has been made for our village. Hiruzen took a deep breath and said, in order to know the secret you must go back to before the founding of Konoha. In fact the secret goes back to the founding of the ninja world. To a man known as the Six Realm Sage. As some of you may know the Six Realm Sage was the man who discovered the secret of chakra and how to use it for jutsu. The sage was also the man who saved the world from the most powerful of demons. The Juubi. All eyes were locked on the Sandame and many had the looks of shock and fear on their faces. Hiruzen said, now I am sure you are wondering why none of you have heard of this Jubi since you all believe the Kayubi was the most powerful of the Biju. Dot and as of today you're right for the most part except the Biju are in fact pieces of the original Jubi. The Six Realm Sage could not kill the Jubi because it was immortal. Dot but the Sage did discover a way to kill it. Something that is so simple but also at the same time seems impossible. He killed it through chakra exhaustion. At this everyone blinked and Hiruzen said, I know, sounds crazy but think about this, chakra is created from mixing mental and physical energy together, nearly everyone in the world knows this. So what the sage did was separate the jubi mental energy and the physical energy into separate places. He sealed the jubi body into himself and sealed the jubi chakra into nine animals. The nine animals became what we know as the biju. Now the biju at that time were not as we know them. After the Jubi Chakra was sealed in them the Biju minds did not have the knowledge of how to recreate the body of the Jubi. They did however have the knowledge to heal their own body like every living thing in the world does which is what allows everything to grow as anyone who has studied anything on biology can tell you. Hiruzen waited a moment and said, now like any living thing the animals could create their own chakra as long as they had the mental energy and physical energy. Which is why the sage tasked his most loyal ally and friends to protect the world from the demons. This clan did so by following the sage example of giving the biju chakra exhaustion. They sealed the biju into themselves and drained it as much of the chakra they could over their lifetime until right before they died when they would release the biju which would then begin rapidly healing its body using the jubi chakra in it but before it was fully healed it would be sealed again into a child of this clan who would then over their life drain the biju of more and more of their chakra in an attempt to completely kill the biju over time from generation to generation. That is until Konoha was founded. Hiruzen saw he had the eyes of everyone and he blinked as he saw a bird walking on the roof near him and saw the blue eyes and thought, there you are Naruto, or is that a cage bunshin? Hiruzen cleared his throat and said, as you have read in the history books of our village Madara Uchiha and Hashirama Senju fought each other for the position of leader of this village. What you don't know is that Madara Uchiha wanted an advantage over Hashirama since they were pretty much even in skills and strength. To get this advantage Madara sought out anything that could give him the edge for victory. In his quest for power he discovered the clan known as the greatest sealmasters in the world at that time. He kidnapped a female member of this clan and ordered her to create a seal that would aid him in defeating Hashirama. Dot the woman refused and Madara used his Sharingan on her. Unfortunately in doing so he learned the truth about her and her clan. Because at that time she was the current Jinchuriki of the Kayubi no Kitsune. Every eye in Konoha went wide and murmurs broke out and Hiruzen said, yes, the greatest sealmasters at that time was also the clan chosen by the Six Realm Sage to protect the world from the Biju. Madara using his Sharingan on her was able to control her and forced her to fight Hashirama using the Kayubi power. It was at that time Hashirama used his Mokutan bloodline to trap her to keep from harming her since she was innocent in the matter and that is how he learned he was able to suppress the chakra of Biju. Dot the reason he could is because the Senju clan was one of the descendants of the Six Realm Sage. Just as the Hayuga and the Uchiha clan was. Dot the eldest son of the sage got the eye bloodline of the sage and the youngest son got the body bloodline of the sage. The eldest son had two sons. One was born with the Sharingan and one with the Byakugan. At this the crowd looked at the members of the Hayuga and Uchiha clan in shock or awe. Hiruzen said, after Hashirama suppressed the Kayubi chakra it also broke the Sharingan control on the woman who turned around and used the bloodline that her clan had gained from generation of absorbing the Biju chakra to help Hashirama defeat Madara. That was how the battle between Hashirama and Madara truly went. Dot but the cat was out of the bag so to speak about the Biju. After the battle Hashirama and the woman talked and an alliance was formed between the Senju clan and the woman's clan. The woman's clan was interested in the Senju ability to suppress the Biju chakra and the Senju clan was interested in the clan's knowledge of seals. As such the symbol on each hiate in Konoha was a symbol for the alliance that was made, the leaf representing the Senju clan, and the spiral representing the Uzumaki clan. 
Gasps and looks of shock went out through the crowd while many people began to look for Naruto. Hiruzen said, yes, as many of you know there is an Uzumaki in Konoha and I will explain more about him in a few minutes as there is more to the story you must know. Now to finalize the deal between the Senju clan and the Uzumaki clan the woman who contained the Kayubi, Mito Uzumaki and Hashirama Senju were married. Madara Uchiha wanted to break this alliance, wanting revenge told others about Mito and the Kayubi claiming that Konoha had a weapon to use against them. This sparked the first great shinobi war and would have destroyed Konoha but our new ally of Whirlpool country, home of the Uzumaki clan made a sacrifice to save us. They sent the other eight Uzumaki who had a biju sealed in them to the other factions that was going to destroy Konoha as a peace offering which was accepted and ended the war. Mito and Hashirama had one son together Madara seeing this became furious and tried to get the Uchiha clan to revolt but they turned Thier back on him and he attacked Mito and Hashirama's son severally wounding him making it where he would never be able to become a shinobi. Hashirama wanted revenge chased him where they fought each other at the valley of the end and killed each other. Hiruzen said, after Hashirama suppressed the Kayubi chakra it also broke the Sharingan control on the woman who turned around and used the bloodline that her clan had gained from generation of absorbing the Biju chakra to help Hashirama defeat Madara. That was how the battle between Hashirama and Madara truly went. Dot but the cat was out of the bag so to speak about the Biju. After the battle Hashirama and the woman talked and an alliance was formed between the Senju clan and the woman's clan. The woman's clan was interested in the Senju ability to suppress the Biju chakra and the Senju clan was interested in the clan's knowledge of seals. As such the symbol on each hiate in Konoha was a symbol for the alliance that was made, the leaf representing the Senju clan, and the spiral representing the Uzumaki clan. Gasps and looks of shock went out through the crowd while many people began to look for Naruto. Hiruzen said, yes, as many of you know there is an Uzumaki in Konoha and I will explain more about him in a few minutes as there is more to the story you must know. Now to finalize the deal between the Senju clan and the Uzumaki clan the woman who contained the Kayubi, Mito Uzumaki and Hashirama Senju were married. Madara Uchiha wanted to break this alliance, wanting revenge told others about Mito and the Kayubi claiming that Konoha had a weapon to use against them. This sparked the first great shinobi war and would have destroyed Konoha but our new ally of Whirlpool country, home of the Uzumaki clan made a sacrifice to save us. They sent the other eight Uzumaki who had a biju sealed in them to the other factions that was going to destroy Konoha as a peace offering which was accepted and ended the war. Mido and Hashirama had one son together Madara seeing this became furious and tried to get the Uchiha clan to revolt but they turned Thier back on him and he attacked Mido and Hashirama's son severally wounding him making it where he would never be able to become a shinobi. Hashirama wanted revenge chased him where they fought each other at the valley of the end and killed each other. Hiruzen said, now the son Mito and Hashirama had contained both the Uzumaki bloodline called Special Chakra which is basically chakra that is 10x stronger than normal chakra and the Mokutan bloodline but because of his injuries he wasn't able to use it. Because of the Uzumaki clan members who were sent to other lands as peace offerings they found several clans that were not happy with Thier homes or Thier leaders. As such they contacted Mito who spoke with Tobarama and he agreed to let these clans join Konoha which is how most of the clans here joined Konoha. Dot one of the Uzumaki clan members was married to a woman and had two children together. Dot the Uzumaki member was in the land of lightning and learned that Kumo was planning to turn his two children into weapons had his two children snuck to Konoha. They were given a new name to hide them from Kumo. Dot the name they were given was the Yamanakas. Inoichi and Ino eyes widened and Hiruzen said, the Yamanakas were a brother and sister. Kumo killed Thier father and using the sealing knowledge they gained sealed the biju he had in another person who would be loyal to Kumo. They started the second great shinobi war to get back the two children they wanted as weapons which caused the others to want their own weapon and followed Kumo example and soon everyone was fighting. To help protect the two children the sister was married to Hashirama son while the brother was raised like a son by Toboramu and he eventually started his own clan not knowing of his connection to his sister. Eventually Tsunade Senju and Nawaki Senju were born to the Isis and Ryu Senju and Yu-Gi-Oh Yamanaka gave birth to Ken Yamanaka who is the father of Inoichi Yamanaka. Hiruzen waited a moment and said, now Nawaki Senju died in the war along with Toboramu and the only people who knew of all this was Mito and myself. At that time the only ally we had was Whirlpool and had it not been for them then we would have been destroyed in the war. I could have tried to go back on our word and followed the example of other nations and place the Kayubi in someone else who would be more loyal to our village instead of a single clan. Dot, but the Uzumaki clan had done so much and sacrificed so much for us that I could not go back on our word so when Mito came to me and told me her time was getting closer to the end and a new Jinchuriki was to be made I asked her what she wanted to do. 
Nawaki had died and Tsunade was told to seal the Kayubi in and Mito wanted the Kayubi to stay under the Uzumaki clan control so that it would not be used as weapons like other villages were doing with Thier Biju and I agreed but the Senju line and the Uzumaki line had to be mixed together to see if it was possible to speed up the process of killing the Biju once and for all. Hiruzen chuckled and said, as luck would have it Tsunade came back from the front line severally injured and in a coma. Dot and while she was in the coma it was discovered that she was pregnant. My wife delivered the baby and I had him placed in the orphanage to hide him. I informed Mido that Tsunade had a son but I wouldn't tell her who it was because while I would allow the Uzumaki clan to control the Kayubi, I also wanted to keep the Kayubi here to deter others from attacking us so Mido arranged for an Uzumaki female to come to Konoha who would be the same age as the son of Tsunade and I hid Tsunade's son in the orphanage but not before running a blood test to find out who the father was and discovered it was my other student Jiraiya. Eight years later Kashina Uzumaki was sent to Konoha from Whirlpool and became the new Jinchuriki of the Kayubi and Mito died. I would have put them in an arranged marriage to each other but Iwa, Suna, and Kumo joined together and destroyed Whirlpool and the Uzumaki clan was destroyed besides Kashina. A puff of smoke in the corner of the roof caught everyone's attention and Naruto appeared sitting on the roof and said, almost, a few actually survived but I can understand why you would think. Right now there's only two of us left that I know of. You're getting a little long-winded so I'll just speed it up, my dad was the Yandaimi, my mother was Kashina Uzumaki, they got married and had me and my mom was the new Kayubi Jinchuriki but the reason it was released on Konoha is because an enemy ninja attacked my parents right after I was born, killing the Sandame's wife who was there at the time and using me as a hostage forcing dad to rescue me while the man kidnapped my mom and broke the seal holding Kayubi back. This is what he looked like. As he was covered in smoke and everyone saw a man in a black cloak with red clouds on it and a spiral mask. Naruto was then covered in smoke and said, I don't know who the guy is but I do know that Danzo does. The other Uzumaki I mentioned claimed that Danzo wanted the Kayubi as a weapon for him so had Root tracked down an Uzumaki besides my mother, raped her, waited till she had a child and then stabbed her and left her for dead. Too bad she lived Danzo. She survived and found out you hired the guy in the mask to fight dad and kidnap mom and was supposed to bring mom to where Root was so they could steal the Kayubi but. Naruto stopped talking as a root member appeared behind him stabbing him with a sword through the back causing blood to fly out before the root removed the sword and disappeared in a puff of smoke. Hiruzen seeing this screamed, Anbu, arrest Danzo for treason and any root agents you find. J-O-U-N-I-N-S, get Naruto Uzumaki to the hospital and protect him from root, go. A puff of smoke in the corner of the roof caught everyone's attention and Naruto appeared sitting on the roof and said, almost, a few actually survived but I can understand why you would think. Right now there's only two of us left that I know of. You're getting a little long-winded so I'll just speed it up, my dad was the Yandaimi, my mother was Kashina Uzumaki, they got married and had me and my mom was the new Kayubi Jinchuriki but the reason it was released on Konoha is because an enemy ninja attacked my parents right after I was born, killing the Sandame's wife who was there at the time and using me as a hostage forcing dad to rescue me while the man kidnapped my mom and broke the seal holding Kayubi back. This is what he looked like. As he was covered in smoke and everyone saw a man in a black cloak with red clouds on it and a spiral mask. Naruto was then covered in smoke and said, I don't know who the guy is but I do know that Danzo does. The other Uzumaki I mentioned claimed that Danzo wanted the Kayubi as a weapon for him so had Root tracked down an Uzumaki besides my mother, raped her, waited till she had a child and then stabbed her and left her for dead. Too bad she lived Danzo. She survived and found out you hired the guy in the mask to fight dad and kidnap mom and was supposed to bring mom to where Root was so they could steal the Kayubi but. Naruto stopped talking as a Root member appeared behind him stabbing him with a sword through the back causing blood to fly out before the Root removed the sword and disappeared in a puff of smoke. Hiruzen seeing this screamed, Anbu, arrest Danzo for treason and any Root agents you find. J-O-U-N-I-N-S, get Naruto Uzumaki to the hospital and protect him from Root, go. And that is the end of the first part of this what if and please don't forget to like and subscribe with notifications on and anyways my ducklings, peace.